I can tell you that when this guitar was built, the truss wire was never turned until I turned it yesterday. Fact. Well, hey, welcome to the shop today. The first thing I want to say is uh, thank you to everyone who has subscribed. I'm still a very tiny little YouTube channel, um, but I am grateful that uh, you folks are watching these videos and hopefully you're enjoying them. So if you're enjoying that and uh, you'd like to see more, hit subscribe and hit the notification bell. The same spiel that every other YouTuber makes. So, oh God, I just totally, that's better. I uh, went to the dentist uh, yesterday. Uh, my teeth are all really clean. Uh, and I'm really happy. My tongue hurts because I can now feel the bottom teeth. It's been 10 years. Yeah. So, I drank some coffee this morning, so they're probably a little brown. Huh. Okay. I got this in the mail. This cool old box. The guy sent these to me. Inside this box are these. All right. These are, these are pickups for a Rhodes piano that I am currently restoring back to its hopefully better than original uh, condition, which is how I treat guitars. If it can make music, I can fix it. I have on my bench today uh, a very interesting instrument. Uh, not going to see too many of these. My compliments to the owner, um, Shane, and he is a uh, repeat customer of mine, and I'm grateful to you, Shane, for bringing these guitars in. This one was really special. Um, it's a uh, fairly rare instrument. We're going to do a flyby here. There it is. This is an Adrian Vandenberg signature PV guitar. And it is in immaculate condition. A little bit of pick scratching down here where there's no pick guard. Um, scratch plate, whatever you want to call it. So, um, over the next uh, several hours, I will be dismantling this thing, taking it apart, putting new strings on it, setting up the string action, setting up the neck relief, setting up the intonation, um, making this guitar better than new. Um, we'll be doing a fret polish and dressing the uh, fingerboard with linseed oil and uh, doing my typical uh, guitar setup stuff on this thing, checking all the electronics. It does have, I did plug the guitar in and uh, there's some <laughs> stuff going on with the electronics in it. We'll clean those, uh, the volume controls. A really fun uh, day ahead of me today. It's Tuesday. Oh, I love Tuesdays. Hang on, I'll be back. Adrian Vandenberg uh, PV uh, signature guitar and uh, what I have discovered is that uh, this is an American made guitar and so rather than being a three millimeter um, truss rod adjustment it is actually a one eighth uh, hex key boom they work good but what PV has done uh, they have a 5 sixteenths um, nut in here uh, that would allow me to turn the truss rod. And the end of that nut is about right there in the fingerboard, which means it's way too far up inside there for me to get a wrench in there. I have tried this, and I have tried your classic uh, Gibson um, truss rod wrench and it is not long enough boy they didn't make it easy so I'm going to remove um, this portion of the instrument and see if that gives me enough uh, room to get in there hang on truss rod adjustment uh, on this guitar the truss rod adjustment should be uh, when a guitar is manufactured totally accessible and easy to get at a tech should never have to struggle to turn a truss rod on a guitar. It is one of the most important adjustments that can be made on a stringed instrument with a neck such as this. And here is what PV has done. Look at that. That is a 5 sixteenths nut. This one has never been touched by a wrench in the many years that this guitar has been alive. And as you can see, there's con cement. It appears 
almost I don't know what the heck they've used around that but what I'm forced to do I can't get a wrench on that um, the top of it oops sorry um, my handy camera work you know I'm looking and filming at the same time uh, boy they did not make this job easy uh, there you go I know uh, Dave over at Dave's World of Fun Stuff would love this. Oh, yeah. Well, all right, here we are back. You can see all the chunks of whatever is stuck down in there. I think it's concrete, actually. I think they use mortar. But uh, what I had to do was... So, I had to dig wood out... From underneath that nut, the wood underneath there, you can see how deep uh, in in respect to the direction down uh, that nut is. And you can see that underneath here, there is zero wood. I'm guessing that the wood um, right in this area of the, the neck and the truss rod adjustment, less than an eighth of an inch thick. There's just nothing there. So um, I had to take a pickaxe. No, I joke. Um, I had to take this device uh, and scrape uh, wood away from the nut that is the truss rod adjustment nut. Um, and thank God I didn't poke through the bottom of the uh, neck. Now I'm being hypercritical here because... Um, the truss rod in this guitar cannot be turned. Uh, at least, I don't have a, a socket deep enough that would fit underneath uh, in this space that they provide. Here's the here's the nut. Okay, so I don't have a truss rod long or a wrench long enough that will allow me to get inside this hole. And then reach the end of the nut that is literally about that far back under the fingerboard. Here's a, a piece, a chunk of wood that was blocking my wrench from actually being able to be placed on the truss rod adjustment. So enough uh, whining about that. Yes, I'm whining. I was able to turn the truss rod and get this neck uh, set perfectly. It's a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale neck um, similar to a Les Paul, um, which we all know. Adrian played Les Pauls for quite a while during his career. And I'm guessing he probably played this guitar for, well, until he needed it set up for the first time. And then he threw it down a drain pipe. I joke. Um, this is going to be a killer when it's all said and done. Got that turned. Look at the mess down here. Oh, boy. Lots to do. All right, so here's a look at the back of the uh, headstock gold hardware. There's your patent number. And your serial number, fairly low serial number. This is uh, handcrafted in the USA. Oh. Okay, good job, guys. Um, but one of the, the, the really super cool things about this guitar is it was manufactured, I'm, I'm guessing, 1989. And it still has condoms on it. Uh-huh. Nice. I'm going to leave them on there. Um, given it's this old and it still has the rubbers, I'm going to leave them. Uh, Alright, so I see I spared you the agony of watching me remove screws. Let's see what the back of this thing looks like. Oh, good. Good lord. Okay, it's happened. Kaler has created a uh, tremolo bar that cannot be the screw the springs can't be set in alignment you can't put three springs in in a straight line well here's the guts of the uh adrian vandenberg and look at what they've done here with this wiring They have all these little tiny wires all mangled and tangled in the pickup selector switch. Um, really, guys? Okay. I think we've just improved the health of this guitar.
and I will strap these out of the way. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll take care of that with some uh, shrink wrap. Okay, fix that. Yep. Yeah, she's fixed. Here we are back top side and obviously I've pulled all the strings off the guitar and was able to get at the truss rod. We have run out of height adjustment uh, for the for the string action. Um, unfortunately on this instrument obviously I can't bend the neck uh, down at this point. If this was a bolt-on neck I'd unbolt it, put a shim in there and tip the neck down. That would allow me to adjust the uh, string action to be appropriate for this. Currently at the 12th fret we're up around 17 or 7 64ths and 5 64ths. So the string action on this guitar is not appropriate. We need to get that down at the 12th fret 5 64ths or 4 64ths and you know I want this down 4 to 3 64ths um, and I've run out of adjustment ability here the screws are totally bottomed out and the string action was where I said 7 64ths on the low E string which as you know is very high so I have to uh, scratch my head figure out what the best process is by which to allow me to knock about 6 64ths of height off of the string action down at this end. Um, here is the measuring device and as you can see 6 64ths focus there we go. I need to get about that much movement right here on these screws. That is the pivot point where this uh, sits. And as you can see, there is not 6 64ths underneath that to grind that off of there. Huh. Uh, they're brass uh, inserts that go in here that are threaded. And I need to take about 6 64ths off uh, of that. And then this maple on the top needs to go down also. Here's what the pivot point looks like for the uh, adjustment of the screws. I will conquer this. And I have lowered the uh, adjustment on this. So now the uh, string height can be adjusted to the proper height that it should be in relationship to the neck, which the angle is up instead of flat or uh, down at this end of the neck. It should be down. Uh, this one is tilted up. Uh, it's a manufacturing malfunction, oversight, whatever you want to call it. So, um, I am at a point now on this guitar where I am going to um, polish the frets and clean up the fretboard. And then I get to deal with this rigmarole, which is put the saddle on here, put the strings on here, check the neck relief. If I have to turn the truss rod, I get to pull all the strings off the guitar again, pull the saddle off of here, get my wrench down in between this slot uh, make an adjustment and then put it all back together again my hope is that my initial assessment of the uh, truss rod is correct and that i get the neck relief uh proper once i get string tension on it man that is this is an engineering yeah uh it's a total fuck up all right i said it Alright, so I put some time into the uh, Adrian Vandenberg signature. I have polished and the frets and treated the neck with linseed oil. And these little spots you can see here are uh, where the wood is kicking out the excess linseed oil that is in the body. And I'll wipe that off um, as soon as it shows up so that I uh, don't end up with spots, shiny spots, all over the neck where this linseed oil will harden. So kind of a simple process here, but you got to kind of pay attention to that sort of stuff or you'll have little bright, shiny spots uh, on the fretboard. It only takes usually, you know, 15, 20 minutes and that will all knock it off. But all the little spots where the oil's being spit out of the... Spit out of the wood! Okay, um... Something I'm seeing here, 
uh, there are some shims that sit under the nut and as you can see they protrude out past the edge of the nut right there I am going to um, cut those off so they no longer appear on the outside of that and it almost appears to me as if some of these frets had been super glued down uh, given they may have been popping loose um, I went over the entire fingerboard with a uh, razor blade and knocked off all the excess oil and such that was built up on this fingerboard. Could have been treatment from the factory. This thing has hardly been played at all. Uh, so, And the other thing I did was I polished out all the pick scratches uh, in the surface of this guitar for my customer. I gave it back to him in better shape than I got it, right? Because that's how I roll. <laughs> placed a note inside this instrument for the next guitar tech or the current owner to find at some point in time. Yeah, I like to do that once in a while and I have people ask me to sign their guitars all the time. Um, I didn't do that. I put a note in there and this can be removed if anybody ever chooses to do that. Be good to your wood. Yeah. Here it is, the Adrian Vandenberg signature guitar made by PV. <laughs> to have this in my shop um, 
Thank you, Shane, for your faith in my work and uh, your diligence in pursuing great instruments to uh, acquire uh, on the internet and in other places uh, in the world. Y'all have a wonderful day. Hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, I'll be back with more. Again, the Adrian Vandenberg signature quilt top guitar. Peace.